So th this patient, um, she presented with advanced stage ovarian cancer. She presented with abdominal bloating, ascites. Um, she had on CT scan what appeared to be multiple peritoneal nodules, pleural effusion. So by looking at the CAT scan, looking at her C125 being elevated to 600, seeing her symptoms, um, we knew that this patient uh, most likely had advanced stage ovarian cancer at this point. So seeing somebody who's 70 years young coming into the office with these complaints, the CT scan findings, as well as the laboratory studies, I think at that point we can safely assume it's advanced stage ovarian cancer, but there's other things in the differential diagnosis. So um, at this point, I would have a discussion with a patient saying um, we could do surgery, which is primary debulking surgery. We could consider neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Really the goal with surgery is to get patients to as minimal disease as possible. And when you look at CAT scans, you look at PET scans, it's not always what you see on the CAT scan or the PET scan uh, that's gonna correlate with it at the time of surgery. So it's a lot of clinical judgment and using surgeries like using a drug, we have to make sure and select the appropriate patient and try to get the, the, the most efficient surgery we can. And um, when I was a younger doctor, times we would do surgery, give chemotherapy and do additional surgery. We're really trying to get away from that and trying to select our patients for primary debulking surgery or select patients for new adjuvant chemotherapy. New adjuvant chemotherapy is where we'll look at a patient, we'll say, we don't think we can get this patient to optimally debulked, and so we'll go ahead and give them chemotherapy first. So chemically debulk them with the, uh, with the, with the chemotherapy and then do an irritable cytoreductive surgery and then additional chemotherapy afterwards. And so I think that that's how we wanna approach the patients because really for an advanced stage of brain cancer patient, the best outcomes are gonna to be to get a good quality surgery as well as make sure we have a good response to chemotherapy. If you operate on patients and you do a very aggressive surgery, but they don't recover from surgery and receive chemotherapy in a timely fashion, may be considered a surgical success. However, by not getting their chemotherapy, the oncologic outcome may not be as optimal. So to me, I really think we have to be very selective when we look at how we want to do primary debulking surgeries and really select the candidates appropriately. The implications of ascites and having high risk factors. When I look at patients, I would say ascites is a risk factor for poor prognosis, and really that may be a marker of aggressiveness of disease. There are studies that look at ascites and outcomes, the volume of ascites and outcomes. And really, I think a lot of times that correlates with the amount of miliary disease. So uh, high risk features, you think about ascites, you, you think about advanced stage, uh, pleural fusions, um, disease metastatic to in the liver or in the uh, parenchyma of the spleen. And also with this patient, she's uh, age 70, um, and we're seeing an aging population, but age is a risk factor for, for patients with ovarian cancer. So looking at this patient and, and, you know, collectively, you know, seeing somebody who's 70 years young, advanced stage ovarian cancer with her radiographic findings, some of these high risk features, there's no doubt that many would consider this patient for uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy or for primary debulking. It's really gonna be up to that surgeon as well as the patient and the family, how they wanna approach on a risk basis type of model to, to, to choose her surgery as well as chemotherapy. So the risk of recurrence is, is really based upon the stage. And you bring up a very good point. You know, stage one cancer is fairly rare in ovarian cancer. And, and um, a lot of us will consider stage two, stage three, stage four as advanced stage. But how I look at it, and when I, when I talk with patients, that about 70 to 80% of patients will have stage three or stage four. So this patient who presented at 70 years young with her ascites, the, the symptoms that she had, this is very typical for somebody with advanced stage ovarian cancer. And the prognosis for advanced stage ovarian cancer is that we get patients into remission. Again, remission is no evidence of disease by blood test, C125, by CAT scan, and by physical exam. However, how long is that remission gonna be? Ovarian cancer seems to be very chemosensitive, but it wants to be virulent and wants to recur. And so what I usually tell folks is that 80 to 90% of these patients will go into remission. However, 70 to 80% of those patients will suffer relapse at some point. And so unfortunately with this patient, seeing what she's going through and seeing her stage of disease, um, that's a risk factor for her to have a, a recurrence. Patients with stage one cancer, negative lymph nodes, thoroughly staged, or to go chemotherapy, at times, you know, curability is 90, 95% for those patients.